Astrophotographers, but especially beginners, often ask me, can I do astrophotography without a tracking mount? And to be short, yes, it's possible. So I've captured multiple images without a tracking mount. So the image you're currently seeing of Comet C2023A3 was captured without a tracking mount. And as you can see, astrophotography is definitely possible without a tracking mount. In this video, I would like to explain how I took this image of Comet C2023A3. So first of all, I would like to mention that astrophotography is definitely, definitely possible without a tracking mount. So even the image you're currently seeing of the Orion constellation was captured without a tracking mount. But in this video I would like to focus on how I've captured the image of this comet with um, this camera and this lens without a tracking mount. So first of all it's very important to use a shorter exposure time because when using a very long exposure time you will get star trails in your final results. So when using an APC sensor for example with a focal length of 30 millimeters the maximum exposure time without getting star trails is around 10 seconds. But you can even take test images under the night sky and test the longest exposure time you can take without getting star trails in the final results. So for me with an APC sensor and with 30 millimeters of say the maximum focal length of this lens the maximum exposure time is um, around 10 seconds and then I captured single images with an exposure time of 10 seconds so when planning to capture images of deep sky objects and night sky without a tracking mount it's very important to use the maximum aperture of your lens because we're planning to capture as much light as possible when planning to do deep sky astrophotography with a tracking mount usually I recommend to not use the maximum aperture of your lens because the star quality is not that good. But since we're not using a tracking mount, it's very important to let in as much light as possible. Therefore, it's very important to use the maximum aperture of your lens. In this case, it's f2.8. Furthermore, you need to select an ISO value. Um, so it really depends on the camera you're using. Usually I'm using something between 800 and uh, 3200 but I usually do not recommend to use the maximum ISO value because then you will get a lot of noise in your final results. But furthermore, try to not use the lowest ISO value of your camera because um, the image will be very, very dark. So I'm usually using an ISO value between 800 and 3200. So um, these are the settings I used to capture this image of this comet. And then it's very important to capture a lot of images of this object. Because when capturing more images and st when stacking them in the end, you will reduce the noise in your final results. And that's very, very important. Therefore, definitely make sure to capture as many images as possible. Something that's very important to mention is that um, you need to select a RAW on your camera because that's very important. Because you can only uh, stack images in um, Deep Sky Stacker when they were captured in RAW. So that's very, very important to mention. Then I'm always using Deep Sky Stacker in order to combine all of those images. But something about capturing those objects, it's very important to center the object in the framing of your camera. And since the Earth is rotating, the object will move uh, through the, your image. And therefore it's very important to center your object every five minutes. So something in that range, depending on the focal length you're using. When using a focal length of 300 millimeters, you, may, you need to center the object every two minutes, or something like that. But I would not recommend using a focal length of 300 millimeters because then the exposure time needs to be very short in order to not get star trails in your final results. But, you, but when using 30 millimeters, you can use an exposure time up to 10 seconds, which is great. In my case, I captured over 160 images in, and then I stacked them in Deep Sky Stacker. So this is what I did. So I combined 160 single images of that comet in Deep Sky Stacker. Something that's very, very important to mention is that you need to use calibration frames. So you need to capture flat frames, bias frames and dark frames. So that's very, very important because those dark frames and those calibration frames will help you to reduce noise in the final results. And since we're using a DSLR camera, so those DSLR cameras usually do have a lot of noise in their images. And when using those calibration frames, so especially in those dark frames, that will help you to reduce the noise in your final results, which is very, very important in deep sky astrophotography. And then I stacked and combined the light frames, so the actual images of this comet, the dark frames, bias frames, and flat frames in deep sky stacker, and uh, was able to capture the object you have seen a few minutes ago. So in total, I've stacked 160 images, which results in total exposure time of 26 minutes. So as you can see, Astrophotography is definitely possible without a tracking mount. So you can do astrophotography on an affordable way. So that's definitely possible. So the only things you need is a camera, a lens, and a tripod, and that's it. And then try to capture a lot of images of that object, stack them in Deep Sky Stacker, and then you will get an amazing image of the night sky. 
if you have any more questions on capturing those objects without a tracking mount. So if you have questions on equipment I've used, on, on how to process these images, or how to capture these images, definitely make sure to ask me down below in the comments and I will definitely, definitely help you. And if this guide and this video was helpful to you, I would really, really appreciate a like and a subscription. Otherwise, thank you so, so much for watching and until next time. Clear skies, Felix.